Today I will be speaking with the very distinguished physician, Dr. Dev Ganadev. Dr. Dev is board certified in general surgery, vascular surgery, and surgical critical care, and is currently the chief of surgery at Arrowhead Regional Medical Center, or ARMC, in Colton, California. Prior to that, he was the medical director at ARMC from 2000 to 2012. He is a board member of the California Medical Board and served as a California Medical Association president in 2009. Dr. Dev has received numerous awards, including the John P. McGovern Complete Physician Award from the Harris County Medical Society, the Distinguished Executive of the Year Award from Cal State University San Bernardino, the Annual Physician Recognition Award from the Medical Board of California, and the American Medical Association's Pride in the Profession Award. Dr. Dev, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate you coming in today. I know that um, as the Chief of Surgery at Arrowhead Regional Medical Center, um, you're a very busy individual, and I know you had surgery this morning, so thank you for coming to the show. Before we talk about the, the medical center and the foundation and some of the issues in healthcare, uh, I think your story and your background is, is very inspiring, and, and I would love to have you share you know, how you got to California and, and how you began your career. Uh, it's an interesting story, Jamar. Actually, <laughs> I, I went to med school in India when I was 16. Mm -hmm. And then I came here when I was 22 mm -hmm. and did my general surgery. I always wanted to be a cardiovascular surgeon. Okay. I did my general surgery residency in Newark, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. That's where I met my lovely wife, mm -hmm. who is an Italian. We got married uh, while I was doing my cardiovascular surgery in Phoenix. Okay. Uh, during the middle of the cardi cardiovascular surgery, I thought cardiac surgery was very boring. <laughs> It's the same thing all over again. Okay. So I decided to do vascular surgery and trauma. I'm pretty passionate about taking care of okay. uh, trauma victims because it takes a lot of different skills. Mm. So I decided, well, let me go into practice somewhere in Arizona because mm -hmm. I did my cardiovascular surgery. So we went to a little town called Prescott. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a big opening there. There was no vascular surgeon for the entire community, mm. and that's the only place in Arizona which is not as hot. Okay. <laughs> so we went there, and uh, I decided to join the VA hospital there. Mm. Uh, so I went and joined. Uh, I thought I would stay there for six months and then, uh, then uh, decide what I'm going to do, mm. either going to practice locally or see where I go. Just before, the day we were moving to Prescott, the way it works uh, amazingly is that I got a call from uh, uh, the chief of surgery at the San Bernardino County Medical Center. Okay. Uh, I told him that, no, I got a job already. Mm -hmm. I don't want to come to California, too many earthquakes. Mm -hmm. so, so then uh, my, uh, my wife said, uh, well, okay, you want to talk, call that guy and see if he still has a job for you? <laughs> so I called and he said, come on over. I came down there and he said, you got the job. Oh, so okay. I quit VA. I, my my government service is one week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I worked for the federal government for <laughs> one week, and the chief of surgery could not believe mm -hmm. that I worked. You know, he thought that I would never stay there permanently because mm -hmm. he. He got you know, decent uh, recommendations from my chief at uh, Arizona Heart Institute. Mm -hmm. So then that's the way I ended up in California. Okay, <laughs> that's a great story. Now let's talk about the, the Arrowhead Regional Medical Center and the Arrowhead Regional Medical Center Foundation. I understand that the way that the collaboration works uh, is a little bit different. They kind of go hand in hand. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, the Arrowhead Regional Medical Center is the county hospital for county of San Bernardino. Uh, in early 1990s, uh, with the help of Board of Supervisors, they, we were able to build this brand new facility, mm -hmm. which opened in 1999. Uh, and the mission of Arrowhead Regional Medical Center is fairly simple, quality health care mm -hmm. and health education to all the people, mm -hmm. period. Okay. Whether you have insurance, whether you are, you don't have insurance. Uh, sometimes people think that the hospital is there only taking care of uninsured. Mm -hmm. That's not true. It takes care of all. Okay. But it's the only hospital which takes care of everyone who comes through. Mm -hmm. It doesn't transfer them anywhere else other than fire le higher level of care. Okay. And it doesn't take any local taxpayer subsidy to run the hospital. Mm -hmm. Interesting. No okay. general fund money comes to that hospital. Wow. It's, hmm. it's very efficient. And the Arrowhead Regional Medical Center Foundation was founded to assist the hospital in its mission. Okay. So they go hand in hand. Okay. Whatever the main mission of the foundation is to help the hospital take care of its mission, which is quality health care for all. Okay. 
Okay. Let's talk about the term quality. I mean, I was um, um, given a tour of the facility uh, recently, and I was extremely impressed with the facility. I've seen a number of hospitals and, and the way that Arrowhead, uh, the, Arrowhead, the Arrowhead Regional Medical Center is, is organized, and the efficiency was very impressive. Um, so speak to quality and, and efficiency of the hospital. Uh, it's it actually when we first moved in 1999 uh, for about a year and a half we did uh, extensive customer service orientation to all the employees and the doctors okay. and uh, interestingly that was called charm school <laughs> so everyone went through charm school actually mm -hmm. I had a couple surgeons uh, uh, told uh, people that uh, uh, oh, we don't want to go through school. I mean, mm. we, we, we know this. Right. So I, I met with them and said, by the way, I'm the chief of surgery. I'm <laughs> going to go through charm school, but also I'm going to teach charm school. Okay. So you got any problem? <laughs> they said, absolutely not. So we put everyone through charm school. Mm -hmm. And it was important because we didn't want to move into a new facility. Mm -hmm. And people feel that it's a county hospital. Mm -hmm. They don't care about us. Right, right. Uh, we did not want that. So uh, customer service, not just customer service, quality of care is, many people think the, how good your result is. Mm -hmm. That is only one part. Okay. The second part is how good that person who got that health care feels. Right, right. It's in the mind of the patient, mm -hmm. not just the mind of the physician or scientific result. So we take that very seriously. Okay. That is uh, best customer service and quality of care, not only in the scientific quality, but also how the patients feel. I think that's, that's really important. And with the, um, I know you were involved and um, instrumental in some of the changes that will happen in healthcare. And I think part of that is you have so many patients that are, com they're gonna com that are going to come into the system that are now wanting a, a better quality of care, not just treatment, but how they're treated. Right. And so talk about that in terms of, of the changes in healthcare and, and maybe how other um, hospitals or physicians or medical centers should be looking at that. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, I worked quite a bit on it. Mm -hmm. uh, 2000, uh, 2009, 8, 2009, mm -hmm. I was the president of California Medical Association. Mm -hmm. At that time, this was just after the election of President Obama, mm -hmm. and the and House was House of uh, Congress. Uh, House was controlled by the Democrats. Okay. Senate was controlled by the Democrats, mm -hmm. and the presidency was controlled by the Democrats. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a democratic organization there. Right. And interestingly, on the House side, the, on the health reform, almost all the control was in the Californians' hands. Mm -hmm. uh, speaker was Pelosi. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the committee where most of the work was done was the Energy and Commerce Committee. Okay. The chair of that was Henry Waxman, mm -hmm. who was a Los Angel Angelino. Mm -hmm. And the chair of the health subcommittee and uh, on uh, ways and means which was the second committee was uh, Pete Stark which is from Northern California and chair of the labor committee which was somewhat peripheral was Miller is mm -hmm. also from California yeah. so I spent a lot of time as as the uh, as the doctor heading the main doctor association mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time in that uh, in their offices okay. and uh, as I mentioned to you before I was one of those few not so people <laughs> who read the entire 2000 pages of health reform mm -hmm. And health reform does put patient in the middle mm -hmm. and make sure that uh, the way the doctors and the hospital will be paid mm -hmm. by showing the results, not mm -hmm. by showing how many number of procedures you have done. Okay. So okay. that's what really makes a difference. Mm. And I would imagine that, that those results are also based on patient satisfaction. Is that One correct? of them is patient satisfaction. Okay. Uh, okay. The others are scientific, like uh, uh, the number of times you, you got wound infection, okay. the number of times you got readmitted to the hospital, mm -hmm. uh, the number of times you had complications like pulmonary embolus mm -hmm. or a deep vein thrombosis. Okay. These are all included and customer satisfaction. Okay. Absolutely. Perfect. Let's talk about the idea of your mission or the mission of the, of the medical center, which is quality of care for all. And I know that some of the programs that, are, um, that I've seen are around tattoo removal and and healthy eating. Um, can you talk about what are some of the main programs that um, you focus on? Yeah, we have we have a ton, but mm -hmm. uh, but uh, <laughs> tattoo removal you mentioned that was we started that in mid 1990s mm -hmm. with the help of uh, fifth 
the uh, then fifth district supervisor Jerry Eves mm -hmm. and his staff, uh, I was able to get a grant from them, community development grant. Okay. We were able to buy a laser machine for sixty thousand okay. dollars, and it's a project between the probation department uh, and the hospital. Okay. So probation department screened all the former gang members. Mm -hmm. Uh, preferably less than 18 years old, okay. who want to change, want to bring a change to their lives. Mm -hmm. So they did the uh, screening, they did the education on that part, and what we did, my group especially, not even the hospital, my surgery group, mm -hmm. we donated our time to remove their tattoos. Okay. And it was a tremendous success. Mm -hmm. uh, they, I think very quickly it went to a two-year waiting list. Wow. It was wow. that successful. Mm -hmm. And there we have so many people uh, went back to school, went, got into jobs. It, it was a great program. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we still have it, not as high as what it was, but we still have the program. Mm -hmm. uh, you asked about healthy living. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, uh, my hospital is probably one of the few hospitals where a real chef heads the nutrition <laughs> department. <laughs> you mentioned that the chef was on a, uh, one of the chef shows at, in Las Vegas, is that right. correct? Yeah, okay. Chef okay. Joe <laughs> was actually on TV in Las Vegas. Okay. Chef Joe is <laughs> wonderful and he has mm -hmm. done a tremendous difference to the quality of food at the hospital. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, that is both for the patients and the uh, mm -hmm. employees, but beyond that, the nutrition department with uh, Chef Joe's leadership, they put on healthy uh, living and healthy cooking classes. Mm. And this, usually when you look at healthy <laughs> living and healthy cooking, I mean, they look like uh, hockey pucks. Right. No. <laughs> Chef Joe doesn't do that. I mean, these are wonderful looking uh, uh, foods mm. with, uh, with, uh, with less fat, mm. less uh, carbohydrates less sugar, uh, does a great job. And yeah. uh, that's community classes, so anybody can sign up. Um, what are some of the other programs that you think are important to, to mention that the uh, medical center uh, provides to the community? Yeah, I, I think uh, the, the biggest ones are, uh, medical center is the only burn center for four counties. Okay. That is San Bernardino, Riverside, Inyo, and Mono. Okay. Uh, once you leave, Colton, you were uh, east, you were next uh, burn center is Phoenix. Mm. Wow. Uh, once you go south, it's the University of California, uh, Irvine. Okay. And west, it's uh, LA County, USC. Okay. North, it's way up to Bakersfield. Wow. That's, I mean, no, way up to Fresno. Okay. So there's nothing in between. So it covers 25,000 square miles or something. It's a, it's a wow. large area it covers. and. Uh, one third of those burn patients are uh, actually children. Hmm. I mean, so my burn team does a tremendous amount of work. Uh, burn surgery, burn care is more taxing than anything else. Hmm. Especially you take a kid with 90% burn. I mean, it's, wow. it's psychologically hmm. for the employees, it is so difficult, but okay. these people, they work very hard and we have very little turnover in the burn unit. Mm. I mean, they're dedicated people. Uh, and I understand that there, there's also um, programs that help build self-esteem as well. I understand that, that um, uh, the burn victims, um, there's mm -hmm. retreats and things like that that they go to and interact with other um, Yeah, we, we actually, the, this is where foundation helps. Okay. Uh, foundation raises funds because we can't use, uh, we can't provide certain services with taxpayers' money, okay. even though local taxpayers are not giving us any money. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's interesting. But still, right. hospital budget is considered taxpayers' money okay. because that's, it's a public hospital. Right. So like sending these kids to burn camp, which really gives them to meet the other people, gives them self-confidence and makes them feel good, makes, brings them back into community, and that's where Foundation raises funds. Okay. And uh, when the families, come to visit, uh, take for example, a kid is here from uh, Needles. Mm -hmm. I mean, unfortunately, that's 250 miles, but mm. it's the only burn center, so he's here. Family has to stay somewhere, okay. live somewhere, so foundation helps to raise that money okay. for them to find a hotel room, mm -hmm. uh, you know, buy the toys. Mm -hmm. So the, this is, Care in our minds is not just giving health care in the hospital. Okay. Care is a total care, including families. Okay. That's the way we do it. 
And, and, and in terms of that, including families, I, um, I know one of the, one of the uh, programs that the foundation helped to raise funds for was the mobile um, clinic. Right. Um, and that is, you know, I'll let you talk about the program, but it's really it's get, get going out into the community versus waiting for people to come into the medical center, correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, interesting how the mobile clinic happened was that uh, I get a call from my uh, uh, marketing guy, uh, mm -hmm. George Valencia. George is excellent marketing mm -hmm. director. Mm -hmm. Uh, says, uh, Dr. G, there is a guy calling and uh, he wants to donate uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars to us. Mm. Usually, <laughs> usually when you get that call, you say, oh, that's not true, really. Okay. But, so <laughs> we took the call and they explained to me that uh, his son was there. He went to multiple hospitals in the local area, but he came to Arrowhead Regional Medical Center. He, had, he was very sick and he didn't even live. Mm. But he was wow. so thrilled with the care. Mm. He decided he was donating $100,000. And after I talked to him, that became $250,000. Wow. So then he gave another couple hundred thousand dollars. So mm -hmm. that we used that money to buy the mobile clinic. Okay. Mr. Kettles, his name, a wonderful man. Uh, when he passed away, he's mm -hmm. not there anymore. But uh, he gave, and we used that money to buy. And whenever the foundation buys to do good, it donates it to the hospital okay. because mm -hmm. it, you have to donate it to the county actually because it's a county hospital. Okay. So hospital runs the, that is the operational money comes from the hospital, okay. but the equipment came. So what it does is it goes to places where there is no health care. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of places between Barstow and Vectorville and a lot mm -hmm. of uh, rural areas where there is. Uh, so we take the health care to people Okay. rather than yeah. asking them to come to us. Mm. So it's just a wonderful program. Mm. And then it also goes to any community event and does health screenings. Mm. It's, okay. it's, it's, a, it's just an amazing program. And similar program is also what we call as a breath mobile. Okay. Uh, we got two. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're the only ones with two in the mm. entire two county area. Wow. They were donated to us by the Asthma Foundation. Mm -hmm. But running them, operations take money. So we, we provide that uh, uh, funds for, uh, uh, for the breath mobile. Mm -hmm. They go to all the schools, mm -hmm. uh, Colton School District, Rialto School District, San Bernardino School District, mm -hmm. and really screen and treat kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where prevention, which you heard multiple times that an ounce right. of prevention is uh, better mm -hmm. than a pound of uh, whatever it is. Right. So, <laughs> so the, the Breath mobile cut down the absenteeism from these kids by about 80 percent. Wow. And it mm. cut down their emergency room visits for asthma aggravation by about 70 percent. Mm. You can see how much value it adds. So Absolutely. that's why prevention is the way to go. Absolutely. And this, this, this program does a tremendous amount of prevention in the school districts. Well, and, and your medical center covers such a wide area. And I know that there's a big focus on research and a lot of the, the, the physicians there have done research and they've showed just the difference in terms of population um, issues and potential issues in certain counties and can you speak to how that affects your area because I think it's, it's pretty significant. Yeah, yeah actually the, there, are, there are two large teaching institutions in, in the San Bernardino County. Mm -hmm. The biggest one is Loma Linda mm -hmm. and we're the second biggest when it comes to training doctors. Okay. Our goal is when we said our mission was quality health care and health education, mm -hmm. because we put both in there. Okay. Uh, we want to make sure that we uh, give qu provide quality health education and recruit those people to go into practice in the local community. Okay. So anytime you have educational program, you got to have research. Mm -hmm. Res uh, <laughs> education without research is some trade school for <laughs> profit. Right. There right. to right. just make money. That's mm -hmm. about it. So, mm -hmm. so that's what we uh, we focus on uh, both the clinical research, population-based research, and uh, somewhat less in the basic research okay. because basic research you need to have labs and all that. We're not that much there, but we do quite a bit of clinical research and also uh, quite a bit of population uh, preventive research. Okay. And foundation helps us too on that one, Ray raises funds to help the research. Okay. I want to take that a little bit further because um, the word education keeps coming up. And I think 
um, with the research that's done and with the knowledge that the, the medical center has, um, if, if I was someone in the community or we had a community meeting taking place, what would you want the people in the community to know about um, what you provide for them? Uh, I think first thing I want them to know is that, uh, hey, you own that hospital. Hmm. We don't, we just manage it. <laughs> okay. right? It's the owned hmm. by the taxpayers of San Bernardino County. Okay. We are there to help you. Okay. And uh, take interest, this is your hospital. Mm -hmm. So whatever you can to assist its mission, mm -hmm. go ahead. Okay. And we provide quality health care you need, whether you're insured or uninsured, it okay. doesn't matter. Okay. We take care of you. Mm -hmm. Come and see us, we'll take care of you. Yeah. You know, Dr. Dev, um, you know, the mission is clear, the vision is clear, and it's clear that, that a lot of really good work is being done to change the lives of the community, of, of people in the community. You know, five, ten years from now, you know, where do you see um, the hospital going, the foundation, um, and the, the impact that the Arrowhead Regional Medical Center um, is going to have in the community? Well, it's a million dollar question. <laughs> every hospital and every healthcare entity is uh, struggling with that. Mm -hmm. because the health reform mm -hmm. is drastically and dramatically changing things. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So the number of uninsured is going to drop by about 70, 80 percent. Mm. Uh, in, uh, in many other states, it might even drop by 90 percent, okay. but California probably around 70 percent or so because California has a ton of undocumented. Okay. Uh, and Health reform, one big flaw with the health reform is it does not cover undocumented. Mm. Mm. So we still will have uninsured. Okay. We still have uh, undoc who are most probably undocumented and the others who do not want to sign up. Okay. I mean, remember that the penalty in the health reform for not signing up is first year is $95. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, if it is $95, how many people who don't really have other important things to do rather mm -hmm. than healthcare comes way down the list. I mean, mm -hmm. you got a place to live, you got to eat, and all right, those things right, come absolutely. first. Mm -hmm. So it's not, so there are a lot of other, those people are going to be there too, mm -hmm. uh, along with undocumented. But what it also does is, which is somewhat scary for places like Arrowhead Regional Medical Center or even Lomeland University Medical Center is, the govern, federal government is taking away a lot of money to subsidize indig indigent care. That's mm. going to be taken away. Okay, okay. So suddenly that money goes away, mm -hmm. and then you still have uninsured left. Right. So it's a huge problem. So we, uh, we are seriously looking at how can we not only fulfill for our mission, but succeed further and grow. Okay. So the, our goal is basically improve the population health. Uh, that is, population health management is completely different from acute care hospital, which okay. takes care of trauma patients, burn patients, elective surgery, all that. Okay. Population health man management involves hospitals, uh, retirement homes, mm -hmm. uh, nursing homes, uh, churches, mm -hmm. community organizations. So we need to partner with home health care agencies. Okay. We need to partner with all of them and we'll be one entity providing where we are good at, but coordinate all that. Okay. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. And uh, that's what a lot of large health systems are trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to drastically change. People don't realize that how mm -hmm. much change is coming. Mm -hmm. As the insurance companies and uh, government are walking away from paying for a service, mm -hmm. Instead, they're going to pay for the health, hmm. health of that community or health of that person. Right. So right. it's a drastic change and uh, everyone is uh, trying to figure out what to do. Hmm. But we, we're pretty certain how we want to go. We, okay. we want to keep, concentrate on keeping population in this neighborhood healthy. Okay. Perfect. Dr. Dev, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you, with you today and, and I think under your helm it's clear that the the medical center and the foundation is really doing some significant things in the community and I look forward to seeing continued success because your success equals patient success. So thank you very much for your time and thank I appreciate you, it. Thank you, Jamar. It's a pleasure. pleasure.
Created in 1977 as a nonprofit social benefit institution, the Arrowhead Regional Medical Center Foundation's mission is to assist the Arrowhead Regional Medical Center in providing quality health care and health education to the community by enlisting an increasing public and private interest, involvement, and financial support. To learn more about the Arrowhead Regional Medical Center Foundation, please visit arrowheadmedcenter.org forward slash foundation. For Successful Physicians Monthly, I'm Jamar Brown.